Hey there, Tommy here. Just uh, sat enjoying a bowl of Dunhill Dark Flake in my uh, newly acquired uh, Vaughn or Vaughn. Not sure how it's pronounced, really. We'll go with Vaughn. I'm not sure what make or model this is, but it's definitely a Vaughn. It's stamped. Um, bought it brand new off a bloke on Facebook at a bargain price. He was just having a bit of a clear out. Um, but yeah, completely unsmoked, so I can't really complain at the price I got it for. But um, thought I'd do a quick video. Oh, I say that every time, but they end up being about 15 minutes long. But if I do a quick micro review of uh, this fine tobacco, it's another one of the uh, recently resurrected old blends, which um, doesn't seem to be available in the UK at the moment, but it is in Europe and the US. But it is indeed a flake. It's sort of a dark Virginia as far as I know. I don't think there's anything else in it. I didn't bother checking tobacco reviews. Oh. These are the sort of flakes you get. Sort of um, dark mottled Virginia. Really nice. And it's very sweet. It's molasses sweet, I think. It's really quite treacle like. Um, which is not a bad thing as far as I'm concerned. Um, it's not overly sweet, it's not aromatic sweet, it's just naturally quite sweet. And it's, it's a bit surprising this one because this was the one that I'd highly anticipated the most. As devotees to my channel will know, I am very much a Virginia Flake kind of guy. Um, and this was one that I anticipated highest when I found out there was going to be four more releases um, towards the end of last year. And initially, I wasn't that impressed. On first impressions, I got the sweetness. But I didn't really get anything else from it. I, I didn't really get it. But I gave it a few, I gave it about a week and a half, two weeks of, uh, of air time. Which is what I like to do with tobaccos anyway. Usually when you see me reviewing a tobacco, it's something that I've smoked several times in various different stages. From as soon as I've opened the tin or pouch and then maybe about a week later, and then a week later, and then a week later, and then maybe a few days later. And, you know, and I tend to try and smoke it in the same type of pipe. If not the same one, then certainly one that has a similar kind of chamber and bowl. Um, I will occasionally try to smoke it in a different pipe, just to see if that makes any difference, which it seldom does, if I'm honest. Um... Some people claim certain pipe shapes are certain tobaccos. Ah, I'm sceptical. Um, I'm not going to say it's complete bullshit, but um, I will say I've not really noticed a difference. But I am rambling a bit there. So anyway, initially, I wasn't that impressed. But after a couple of weeks of the seal being opened, 
it seemed to uh, I don't know, it just seemed to offer up a lot more in terms of flavour in terms of satisfaction it just offered a lot more But it's definitely one that I think needs sipping rather than smoking fast. It's one you've got to allocate a decent amount of time to. Because I think if you ch if you try and chase a flavour in it, you'll just struggle, to be honest. But... If you just sip it and take your time and don't even think about it. then you get a much better experience from it which is often the way with Virginia Flakes um, it's certainly the way with Samuel Garwith's full Virginia Flake I think um, I'll do a review on that at some point so I won't say too much but again it's one of those that if you try and chase it you're not going to get anywhere you've got to let it come to you and also I find that with Capstan Blue Dunhill Flake, you know, exactly the same. You've got to just let it come to you, and it will. i got to say, I really do enjoy this tobacco. I really do. It's one... It's rare for me to find something new where I have that kind of wow moment and think... Right, I need to stock up on that. Um, Dark Flake's one of them. Jermaine's Medium Flake is another. Although, good luck finding that at the moment. Seems everywhere is sold out right now. Which, you know, it's understandable in the current climate. You don't know from one minute to the next where blends are going to disappear too I mean a big shock for me the other year was when all at Golden Slice got discontinued in the UK I would have thought that was a big seller but clearly not it was a bit of a shock of that one so, I can understand why people are panicking a little bit, especially with something like Jermaine's, because it never seems to be fully in stock at any given time. Um, but my understanding is because it's like that, because it's a small family business, and we do small batch production. They might do it, you know, 500 grams a time on some blends. And so when they, when they've got it, they dispatch it, and then people see it's in stock and they're like, oh, well, I, I want to make sure I've got plenty of it. And so then they buy, like, you know, five tins. And then before you know it, it's gone again. I mean, they probably do do it in greater quantities than 500 grams, but you know what I'm saying. They might do, you know, five runs of 500 grams to supply to the main supply uh, to the main um, sales people and then people see it and they just go oh shit yeah I need to buy this and we buy like four or five tins well that's half the stock gone in one transaction and I understand people doing it it's just prudence but at the same time it makes it bloody inconvenient when you want a tin and you can't find it anywhere. I really wanted to try Jermaine's Brown Flake. I've not been able to try it yet. I can never find it in stock anywhere. But then, inversely, when it does come into the shops, I don't really want to buy 
two tins of it because if I don't like it, I'm going to be stuck with it. I did I did a similar thing late last year. I <laughs> rather foolishly, without doing any research whatsoever, I saw that my smoking shop had some tins of bracken flake by Samuel Garwith that were from an old production run that Sam Garwith didn't realise they had. I mean, when we realised it had it and it already discontinued, they just knocked it out in white label tins and sold it. Sent it on to my smoking shop, um, who had a very limited supply. I think we had about 15 tins or something like that. And I bought two. Cracked one open. Tried it. Hated it. Hated it. It's a Lakeland. I should have read up on what it actually was before buying it. But the whole mystery box phenomena got to me a little bit and um, I ended up with them. But it was okay. I managed to trade them off. But, uh, you know, it can be problematic making a knee-jerk decision like that. But I fear that this is going to happen again on a much grander scale because there's been rumours circulating recently about Dunhill Tobacco um, going off the market. Now, it seems to have all stemmed from a blog post, which I do not know the validity of that. I do not know whether it's a reliable source of information. I've not seen anything official. I've spoken to a few people. Some people ex-industry, some people still within the industry. Um, and my understanding, and this is strictly my understanding, this does not mean it's true, but my understanding is that it's a bit of a half-truth, that Dunhill are wanting to take their name off any kind of tobacco products. The reason being that Dunhill, these days, their main source of income is men's fashion, and accessories and fragrances and things like that um, and so they don't really want an association with cigarettes cigars pipe tobacco pipes that kind of thing now my other understanding is that British American tobacco are also they, ha they own the license for the Dunhill tobaccos and a separate company owns the license for the pipes now the company that owns the license for the pipes have no intention of ceasing production so Dunhill pipes will still continue to be made whereas British American Tobacco are not going to renew their license for the Dunhill tobaccos now, my main query on this is, if they're going to cease production of the tobaccos, why in fuck's name release four re-releases the year before, or two years before you're going to cease production? And also, why are they specifying a time frame of 12 to 18 months? Now, some people are speculating it's packaging changes within Europe. Now, that would make sense. However, those changes to the packaging need to be enforced by May this year. So that makes me think, well, that's longer than, you know, that's less time than 12 to 18 months. So you understand where the confusion's coming in. And on the other hand, Dunhill don't 
actually manufacture the tobaccos. They have no part in it anymore. It's British American tobacco and they have different companies who handle distribution. So in Germany it's Colhase and Cot and Cap. In the UK it's Scandinavian Tobacco Group. In America I believe it's Lane Limited. Now this begs a question, if they only own the license and they're not going to renew the license, does that mean someone else is going to take on the tobaccos under the license? We don't I mean we don't know this, but the thing is to Dunhill haven't had a hand in producing their tobaccos in years. Absolute decades. It was Murray's until 2005 or something like that. 2003 or 2005, I forget, it's around that time. mid noughties. Um, so, it does make one wonder if they're still re-releasing new blends or new old blends um, that does make you wonder there must be a plan in place to sort of hand over these tobaccos and then for them to be continue production but under a different flagship because if Dunhill's wanting to disassociate it won't be Dunhill Dark Flake anymore it'll be McBaron Dark Flake or Classic Dark Flake or some other bullshit fuckery of a name, right? But given that they've re released blends recently, I would imagine that would be the case. Um, I don't think it's got anything to do with the FDA um, in the US and the new pending regulations because. They're manufactured in Denmark, so they're not really going to give that much of a shit, if you know what I mean. They're going to be more concentrated on the European and UK markets, and America's just another export. Um, much like Australia. They're not going to give a shit about the legislations in Australia because that's just another export to them. Um, but I don't know. I don't know for certain. All I'm hearing right now is speculation and rumour. I can't verify any of it. I've not heard anything official. I've heard what I've heard through various different sources. Some reliable, some unreliable. Um, so I can't set the record straight. As much as I would like to. I can't. But this makes me wonder are people now going to be bulk buying Dunhill tobaccos in their droves under the fear that they're not going to be able to get them anymore? And in all honesty, I think they probably are. I think people are probably going to do that, um, which, again, it's prudence. Um, in the current climate and the way the world is right now and how hostile it is towards smokers, um, I would say there's probably a lot of blends under the threat of, of being axed and not just the Dunhill ones. Personally, I already have a cellar building up and I intend to keep adding to it. And if the blends disappear, they disappear. But in all honesty, I don't think it's worth bankrupting yourself over and panic buying a load of tobacco because I personally think that the blends will get taken on, you know, someone will, buy, someone will buy the rights to the blends and use a different name. It probably won't, you know, they'll probably just take Dunhill off and start calling them, you know, McBaron or, or, or whoever takes them on, or Lane Limited 
or whoever takes on the blends, they'll change it. So it might then be Lane Dark Flake or McBaron Dark Flake, depending on which ones they decide to keep on. Can't verify that, but that's what I imagine will happen. In the meantime, it probably would be prudent to uh, to stock up on ones you like. I wouldn't say it's worth going crazy over. I wouldn't panic. Um, because if the rumours are true, you've still got 12 to 18 months. So you've got plenty of time to slowly but surely build everything up. But I would also say there are other blends out there. And there's other uh, brands that are probably facing the threat of death by legislation as well, you know? And I would say, if there's any tobaccos you do like, particularly, and you intend to, you know, if you say to yourself, I see myself still smoking a pipe for the next 20 plus years, then I would say, stock up on what you do like now, because A, it's never going to be cheaper than it is right now, and B, it may get delisted. And even if it doesn't get delisted, it's not going to spoil. It'll still age, and it'll be fine. So it probably is prudent to stock up on what you like now. But I would say that whether this impending doom of Dunhill is going to happen or not. At the end of the day, of the Dunhill range, there's probably about five blends that I really like. And of those blends, there's probably about two that I will genuinely be gutted about if they go off the market. And so I'm going to stock up on the two that I like significantly more than any of the others. I may buy a tin or two of the others, but it might not happen. So until an official announcement has been made and not a blog post, I would... Um, I'd exercise caution and scepticism, but also prudence. So anyway, that's my theory. <laughs> and, um, you know, for whatever it's worth, which is probably not a lot, but yeah. But that aside, this is great. I really do recommend it. Enjoy it while you can. Um, hopefully it'll be around for quite some time. But... If it's not, get a tin while you can. It is really good. Um, if you're a Virginia lover, you'll really like it. If you're a fan of um, Jermaine's Rich Dark Flake and um, Sam Garwith's Brown Sugar Flake, I would say this is definitely worth a look because it's very similar um, in composition. Well, composition... Sans the Burley or Orientals or anything like that, but in terms of process, it's very similar, and in terms of flavour, it's very similar. I would recommend it. I would say it's it's definitely in um, the top few blends that I've smoked in the last six months. I will be looking to stock up on it myself. Not out of any major panic, just because I like it, and when I run out, I'll want some more. Um, so, you know. So, yeah. Anyway, with that, I will bid you goodbye. Thank you for watching, if you've stuck with it. If you haven't, I completely understand. Um, and I'll see you again next time. So, take it easy. Cheers.